Right, so I love making my own machinery. I mean, that's pretty obvious. And what isn't there to love about making your own machinery? Now, what I tend to do, obviously, is get old bits and pieces and make various modifications to them and bolt them together. And that works, um, really, if you've got a great tool set. And I don't have a great tool set, but I have a reasonable tool set. And so I can do such things. But there are ways of doing it when your tool set is really, really minimal. And you can still make machinery using a minimal tool set if you use something like this. This is just an absolute godsend. It's fantastic, actually. It's a little bit expensive. When I say a little bit expensive, we're talking about sort of three to five pounds per linear meter. So not break the bank expensive, but it's a little bit expensive. And you can use this to make framework for machinery of all kinds. And it requires very, very little but a handsaw, a screwdriver, a pair of pliers and some snips. That's all you really need. So if you've got that set of tools, a whole bunch of this, then you can make some fantastic machines. Now, for reasons of my very own, I want to make a multiple hole hole punch. And to do that, what I would normally do is cast everything up, drill everything out, cut everything to size. But I'm going to make that multiple hole punch with this stuff so that you can see how a machine can be made using this extruded aluminium to do a pretty cool job. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen something called a comb binder. What a comb binder is, is handily enough, a multiple hole hole punch, punches a load of papers, holds a comb, and those combs have teeth in them that go into the holes that the binder just uh, cut. Now I've got this, which is the internals of one of those comb punches, comb binders rather. And this is the bit that I actually want. And it is just basically a long row of teeth a long row of holes all matched up into each other. You turn the handle, it'll punch it out. So once I've got my essential bit, obviously what I need to do is a whole load of other stuff to hold everything in registration so that I can push my paper through, punch, push, punch, push. Because I do have the option of making it automatic if I put a bit of Arduino control. We're not going to do that. We're going to do a manual version and then maybe later we'll update it to a motor control so it becomes an automatic hole punch. Now, when I look at these things, I try to work out how it is I want this to work. Now, if I look at this, it needs to be in that orientation, so that bit is facing out towards you. The paper gets fed in there, and then we punch that up and down. So clearly, we need something to hold it there. We need something to hold a table, and something we can turn a handle against. Now, if I wanted to cut those out of solid material, that's actually quite challenging because that material has to be relatively large and relatively heavy duty. But like I say, I've got a load of this. So the first thing to do is attach this to some of this so that then I can build a framework around it. Okay, so it turns out it's going to be even easier than I hoped. These things, the extrusions, actually are held together by those cast angles with a bolt going through. The nut of the bolt goes slides into the extrusion, you tighten it up and it tightens down the angles. So once you can get something onto these, you can build an entire frame around it. Now I guess I'm just super lucky, but the bolts go straight through these mounting points, the original mounting points, allowing me to put a piece of angle down there. Then I can use a double length like this, and one will fit there and the other will fit there, and I can hold that all together with these angles, putting the angles in here and here. And that'll make me a sturdy frame that I can attach everything else to. So, a stroke of luck, really, because what I had thought I would have to do is drill out some of this, but actually I don't have to. It all just fits. Okay, that was just super lucky. I mean, these uprights here are fixed on with two bolts that were the original bolt holes in the frame here of the punch. Then I've obviously used a couple of those angles right there to put a, put a foot plate on, and this is forming already the basis of my machine. Now, that's a bit wobbly, so what I'm probably going to do is put a piece in, oops, in there that fits rather nicely. I fix it to these uprights, that'll make it a bit more firm. Then, of course, we've got the feed out here, so I can put a feed out table on there. Not very deep, but enough so that the material that I'm punching just comes out and feeds out. And then I can put a piece on there to cross press it and to be honest, I'm basically done. I need to put extensions on here um, so that it's not wobbly, but it really is a, a piece of cake. <clears throat> and that's the frame finished, and it took me all of two hours. And the only tools I used, screwdriver, Allen key, pair of pliers. Now if you extended it to a drill and a saw, clearly it would be a bit more of a custom fit. This is 
maybe a little large. I might have gone the town a little bit on the framework, but I've got the stuff lying around and I didn't want to saw anything. But in that time, we've created a custom-built machine that's going to punch those holes. And all it really needs now is a table back and front and a handle on it. And for that, I'm just going to use bits of acrylic and they fit on there and there. So let's do that and put the handle on. OK, there it is finished with its handle and its table. Now, I want a multi-hole hole punch for lots of reasons. And the video is not really about that. The video is about using this aluminium extrusion to build machines. There's this particular bespoke machine I want. And it took me two hours to make it from this thing, which was a um, comb binder that was broken. There was a, a broken knob inside. It didn't affect the mechanism I want. So it's also an upcycling project for producing specific machines for your requirements. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's awesome. It's doing what I wanted to do. Now, obviously, I could improve it. I mean, I could make it automatic for a start. All I really need to do is a take-up uh, roller with a drive, a feed roller with a tension roller on it, and then something to drive that up and down, say a solenoid or a geared DC motor going either way. Anyway, it would be really quite easy to make this automatic. At the moment, it's a hand-built version because I want to test the idea, and I also wanted to demonstrate really how easy it is to make bespoke machinery using this element you're extruding. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the project, and thank you very much for watching.